The we moment. are 29 days away from the trade deadline. Uh, and yesterday was the first time I've had this legit oh realistic thought. And no, I'm not going to talk about Luis Robert. There's I, plenty oh, of time I, was, to talk I thought about this him. was coming. Okay. I think they might actually DFA Whit Merrifield. I'm beginning to think this is a real possibility for the first time all year. The yeah. guy is cooked. Um, it's a sunk cost at this point. Like, he really... Obviously, you want to bridge this uh, injury landscape that you're, you know, in the middle of. And so you want to use him and his versatility during that time. But after that, like, Rojas and Clemens can still go down. But David Dahl, Christian Pache, uh, you know, a couple other guys, like, it's kind of do or die time. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I would take Weston Wilson over Whitman Field right now. So, like, they are 29 days away from the trade deadline. You're also kind of 29 days away from not officially making your playoff roster yeah. set, but, like, having a pretty good idea of what it is, and I just don't see where Whit Merrifield contributes to that. I don't know what he does well anymore. Um, yeah. It's just... It's just bad. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. So bad. We'll I don't know if it's a, if it's realistic or not, but for the first time, I went, "Oh, this might be actually." So, um, it's not good. Do you have numbers on it? Yeah, I do. Good. Obviously, we know coming in with that one-year, eight million dollar deal, which I as, thought was a great deal at the time. Yeah, we did. Take we it did. Back. I mean, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. You know, it's fine. Um, it's a one-year deal. Like you always say, there's no bad one-year deals. Is that maybe this one? And for Wit to come Even in, that, I don't think it's that bad. No, it's, it's just, not. It's not my money. It's one year, not my money at all. I'll take that eight million dollars though myself. But but for him to come in as the utility man and be that piece that can help when injuries happen to slot into any role and help, that's what you thought you were getting. However, Wit so far the first eighty four games in one hundred and thirty eight at bats, Wit has only had twenty six hits for an average of a one eight eight. Not good. He's not even giving you anything at bat. At least, and uh, then, like, Christian Pache is only batting, I think, what, 192 or 194? Yeah, but how much do you see him? But at least he's giving you, like, defensive runs saved. And that's plays. the other thing, because on the other side, Witt, who can play second base, can play third base, can play anywhere needed, outfield, whatever, he's not, he's slow, he's not, he's looking slow. Cody Clemens is a he's younger, He's not reading the, the ball right well, now. he's yeah. not getting there, he's not making plays. He's been involved in a number of, like, very questionable missed opportunities of, of yeah he's not giving you anything so Tyler thoughts could it happen uh I, I've been thinking this for a while so to me uh the the issue because I, I understand there's versatility <laughs> I understand oh, that there there's uh he can play four or five different positions <laughs> um his average exit velocity this year is 83.4 it's poop he's not uh. hitting the ball hard he's not barreling his bat speed is slow it's slower than it's ever been um, he's been the, the type of hitter we've talked about him for a long time because the one thing that excited me about bringing him in, even in a, in a diminished role, like I wasn't expecting Kansas City with Merrifield. No, I wasn't no. even expecting no. first two years Toronto with Merrifield. I was expecting a, a, a serviceable bench piece who can play multiple positions, give you professional at bats. His bat speed has slowed down so much that he is late on everything. Yeah. His barrel rate is low. His hard hit percentage is low. His whiff rate is high. His strikeout rate is high. Like all of the metrics that tell you that he is struggling, yeah. he is struggling in. And then defensively, he's not providing you a whole lot. He's no, a minus no. five in range factor. He's in the seventh percentile uh, defensively. I know that he can play multiple positions for you at this point, but you talk about a sunk cost. You're paying the guy no matter what. Yeah. Um, I, I have been Why questioning this for, I've been questioning this for a couple of weeks now. And quite frankly, I think that um, come trade deadline, there is a very realistic opportunity uh, for the Phillies to DFA him and, and provide Cody Clements with more at bats or, or provide him with a roster spot because yeah. He's your utility guy at this point. He can play first. He can play third. He's kind of getting to a point where oh, yeah. he can play left in, in, in a capacity that you need him to. He can play a little second. He's your utility guy at this point. Mm -hmm. I think Whit Merrifield probably knows. He's a vet. He probably knows say, that it's he's not long for this team. I would imagine when everybody comes back healthy, when Harper's healthy, when Real Muto's healthy, um, and, and, and they make a – uh, at least a trade, because I think we're all under the pretense they're going to make at least a trade. Luis Roberts happened. Um, I'm speaking it into existence. Whit Merrifield probably, I would believe that Whit Merrifield and Christian Pache both will not be on this roster come, think so. come August the, 1st. The thing about Whit is he's also 35. Like, we're not talking about a young guy that you can fix anything. 
he's that's his, this is it this is it his numbers have completely continued to just decrease over the seasons because he's aging that that just happened that he's not yeah he was st- stealing bases and you know utility piece in the past that's not anymore and you talk about on the other side Cody Clemens and Edmundo Sosa are utility pieces 